The Rocket Review is sponsored by Why Not Salute. We're so thrilled to have back on the show platinum selling alt rock group Judah and the Lion. I've got Judah and Brian back on the show. I was just saying, guys, it felt like you were just here like, like a year ago, but uh, more time passed than I realized. Yeah, 2016 or 17? Did we figure yeah, out the... I, I don't know, but it's like it's like going, well, yeah, I'm having the guys back in. This will be fun. This be great. It's nostalgic. Yeah. Well, and, and i got to bring this up, too, with uh, the process, you know, with the new album. Wow. 24 tracks. I mean, and it's like I really felt like I needed, like, a therapy couch while I listened to this. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't know what you're going to do for merch, but I hope it's like, you know, something like with an eye covering or something and maybe some jasmine scented candles. Something like, I like that. that. That's yeah, a good idea. I mean, yeah. Let's write that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but this had to be a fun project to work on. I mean, a fun and and deep project. I want to talk about it because you guys have been releasing singles, and thank goodness this thing's coming out on vinyl. But what a great body of work. It's kind of like I feel like it's your Jerry Maguire album with the process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely like a long. Um, you know, we we're Nashville guys, so we uh, made the record here. Um, we started, I guess, like last last May. Yep. Um, so it's been about a year and, and some change, and yeah. um, it was quite the process, no pun intended, just to kind of go through. And then we, we kind of had this concept of going through the stages of grief, right. um, which we use the Kubler-Ross stages, the five stages, which is denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And we wrote mm -hmm. four or five songs per stage, and so it was like emotionally very taxing because you're kind of going through uh, like what was my divorce and, and heartbreak in my life mm. and what it was like to kind of navigate through that season right um but then trying to make the music also very interesting because mm -hmm. you're having 24 tracks and so you don't want right. the, the the listener to get bored or you know to feel like that there's they're listening to the same kind of sounding song over and over so it was it was very fun. We we do hope that it cuts to the heart, um, mm -hmm. when, to the listener, and and we hope that it's musically interesting too. So well, and, and I thought it was very musically interesting. I told you guys before we came down to the studio, to where you're covering so many different styles of music in this. And once again, you know, Brian only got to break out the mandolin a few times. <laughs> it seems like you know, with all the synth work and everything else, and also automatically with the five stages, I was thinking this is like Homer Simpson. When he's on there going through the fights, like going, this is not happening, you know, the bargaining and everything yeah, yeah. like that. But I thought it was interesting, too. I mean, both of you guys were raised by therapists. And so you kind of, it's kind of like with me, like being raised by a musician and an artist kind of warps your perspective some. But it seems like it brought a lot to this with the, the honesty in these songs to where you guys really shared deeply. And, and it seems like it made the songs even bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think... We, some of those concepts were just close at hand with our, both our moms being therapists. Yeah. And growing up in that world and, you know, having, be, trying to be more in touch with our emotions. Mm -hmm. But it was still a human process, I think, nonetheless. Like, we're not ourselves therapists, but we're just trying to tell a story and be honest and real with right. what that process of grief, grief looks like mm -hmm. um, and our journey of kind of turning that into art as a band. And I think you guys did such a great job because to me, you know, certainly all of us go through, you know, seasons with, with grief and loss and whether it's, you know, death, divorce, so many things in life. But I could relate to so many of the songs. But, and also there's, there's, you know, even with sharing these, you know, with denial and with anger and depression, everything you guys have within this album, it's, it's still uplifting. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, you know, you're kind of, you know, wearing your heart on your sleeve but it's not like going, you know, it's like with the, the one song, you know, mentioning tequila. It's like going, well, no, I don't need to go to the bar. But it's like, but it, it feels like very relatable. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best way I would put yeah, it. Yeah, like the, the undercurrent of the record is hope. Mm -hmm. You know, like even right. though we're going through heartbreak, we're not going to stay there. You know, no. we're, we're going, we're wanting to point people towards love and hope and mm -hmm. joy. And, and that's what, you know, true acceptance is, is not looking back or at these certain things and, and saying, oh, that was so easy. No, it's actually been like, that was really difficult, but um, true hope is like, we're gonna move forward regardless. Well, and that's what I felt like with you and Brian, I felt like it's like, I'm reading your guys' journals while I'm listening to this. Yeah. You know, it's like your Which deepest- is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, going, the one thing you never want anyone to do is like, you know, it's like, I've got little notes and things I write to myself. It's like, oh, I hope nobody ever finds these. And it's like that though, with these songs. That's because... what my, my voice memos are like in my phone. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> coming up with the song at 3 a.m. You know, when you're when you're like, this is the best idea ever. Yeah, I know. Until you wake up and go, maybe this not. was terrible. You're right, right. But at that moment, you're like, this is genius. You know, but I but I felt that way with the songs too, to where you know your audience, and certainly you know uh, already with the singles that have released, huge following. You know, major streaming and everything. So I think that the Judah and the Lion fans are really embracing this. But I think also, don't you think you're going to appeal to a broader audience with the process? That's, oh, always, our, that's always our hope, you know. We, those things are kind of out of our control as, as, you know, musicians, as you know. It's like, it's like you know, what sticks or what becomes popular, it's not really in our control. Mm -hmm. But we do, I think Bono has this quote where it's like, it's weird how lyrically sometimes you can get so specific in how universal it, those specific mm -hmm. lyrics can be. And so we do feel like there is like an untapped um, per viewer, listener, um, fan out there that uh, will kind of attach themselves to this. And, right. and, and we, we hope that the vulnerability, again, can kind of connect to, to the hearts and, and help people. What's it going to be like, you know, obviously the big tour kicking off in October. What's it going to be like sharing these songs? Because you guys have your hit songs from your past albums. This is the fifth studio album. And I've enjoyed all your work. Always, you know, I just, I, I like, you know, once again, being Nashville based and, and having uh, you guys here, but just your music has always evolved. And it feels like this is like the next evolution with the process. What's it going to be like performing these songs out, man? <laughs> we, I mean, we always think about the live show when we're making an album. Yeah. It's just, we can't really help it. And so we've had a lot of, a lot of forethought into this and we want to make it a really cool experience that is positive and hopeful but also hits on the stages of grief yeah. um, we're not fully fleshed out on on the whole set and we want to leave some up for surprise but um, it's definitely going to be an emotional and fun night right i was thinking almost like howard jones is like you guys almost need to bring out mimes you know, <laughs> you totally. when Howard did that in the 80s, it's like going, well, look, Judah and the Lion and mimes, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to where they're like acting out the feelings while you guys are playing this. Yeah. But I mean, the instrumentation, too, you know, and, and once again, I know our, our viewers are going to want to buy the vinyl and add it to their playlist because it's such the, the textures. You guys really, I know you recorded this in multiple studios in Nashville, but it's got so many layers of sound from the sense, from the mando, from the voice, uh, just everything. It's so cohesive and it's just a fun listen. It's like it's it's kind of like a roller coaster to where it's like going, ah, oh, we're kind of down now. Oh, we're back up. Mm. You know, and I mean that's great. Yeah, like it, it. We you know we live in a playlisting world, so it's like we wanted the record to kind of feel like this playlist where you know it wasn't like every song sounded the same. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the same vocal. Brian singing on one song, which. Uh, that's the first for us too, which is exciting. Um, I noticed that a different uh, yeah. element um, there, but. Yeah, we wanted it to feel like one big 24-song playlist mm -hmm. um, that told a cohesive story that hopefully remained interesting for the for the listener. So yeah. well, I think very interesting. And you and I were talking too, Jude, about it, even you know some nods to like Weezer, but then it's like also I'll hear something where it's like, okay, well you know this one sounds like the Civil Wars. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. it's it's nice to have those different songs, you know, all within the Americana umbrella. And it, it's not like you guys are copying Weezer, but I just I kind of like that kind of rocks. Oh yeah, there were definitely a reference on, <laughs> on Great Decisions for sure. <laughs> and I mean, Great Decisions, what a song. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that, you know, your fans are really gonna embrace this. It's gonna be hard with the merch. Also, it's gonna be hard with the instrumentation. For you sure. You know, I mean, with the synths and all this stuff, it's like, when we were talking, any cool uh, instruments coming out on tour? Yeah, we're gonna bring a lot of what we used in the studio, which a couple niche synths, uh, like a Moog and an OP-1. Oh yeah. Um, it's fun, like thinking back and looking back at our earlier catalog. Mm -hmm. um, very heavy on the banjo, mandolin, right. acoustic, and there's a beauty in kind of that. We were just, I was just learning the mandolin at the time, so there's a freedom, and you're really using your ear to right. uh, to figure out what you're playing. Whereas mm -hmm. now I use a lot of my finger memory, mm -hmm. um, and so we wanted to recreate that a little bit in the studio with uh, synthesizers and sounds that were new to us. Mm -hmm and that we could really kind of catch, catch that wave um, with the songs and still overlay the, the banjo and the mandolin because that's always kind of been a part of our DNA. Right. But elevate it a little bit. Yeah, and you guys will have the full band out on the road also. Yeah, but we're, we're full on like six pieces. That's me and Brian plus four, four wow. more dudes. Yeah, 
But I mean, the sounds, I mean, it's so much fun for me, you know, knowing your guys' back catalog. And, and certainly you've had so many hits over the years since you started this whole journey. But it's like, it's the synths are just fun. I mean, it's like, you know, you got some big fat sounds and you've got some, you know, edgy organic uh, synthesizers and everything in there. It's, it's, but the vocals and the lyrics, I, I think, stand up on their own. You guys could play these acoustically and still pull these off. Yeah, that was kind of our goal on, on this record, um, particularly was, you know, we, we the, the, the fun, I guess, part of having like mostly like our foundation being acoustic instruments mm -hmm. is we wanted to each song to kind of have that moment where it can live on its own. Like when we're doing these lounges or whatever, um, as we do like per cycle, it's like yeah. one record, you know, maybe they don't fit as well acoustically mm -hmm. or whatever, because there's a lot of programming or whatever. Um, but on this one, it was like, man, we really want to do these well, just bare bones, like just going to a writer's round right. here in town and, and be able to kind of tell the story. So um, thanks for listening to that. And I think another part of this one too is just like what Brian just kind of hit on is, um, and I'm sure you relate to this as a musician yourself, is just picking up something that you're not necessarily like, like me, for instance, like I, I always wanted to be a drummer, but I've never been that good of a drummer. And I got to play drums on this record, wow. which was like, just fun. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. get, getting to play, like seeing Bron on the Moog and the OP-1 and like turning the buttons and stuff like that. It just creates this like sense of freedom and kind mm -hmm. of like childlike thing for a musician yeah. that opens up like a different kind of side of yourself that you didn't know about, which I think the people are going to be able to experience on this record too. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say too on it, Judith, where on the songs, it's it, that sense of renewal comes through. And also, as we all know, it's like when you're grabbing a hold of a new instrument, it's like, I got to put in some time on ukulele and I own plenty of them, but it's like, <laughs> but you know, you just got to, it, it's, it's not your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, if I'm going comfort zone, it's like I'm grabbing a guitar. Yeah. Drums is like, boo, very bold of you. <laughs> very bold of you. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of editing, okay? <laughs> it's like me, though, with synthesizers. I've got some wacky old synths, the same thing. It's like going, you start doing stuff, it's like going, well, this is kind of fun. <laughs> How can you use that in a song? Mm -hmm. That's what you guys have to figure out doing this. I wanted to bring up also uh, the big show here in Nashville in October at Municipal Auditorium. Yeah, bring it on. Stoked about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah our, last, a, our last headline was Ascend. 2019. Amphitheater. Yeah. Our last big show Pretty in Nashville, good. so. To do Municipal is obviously a dream. We've played there. Did we do the Johnny Cash thing? Or no? That was at... Uh, oh, that was that was the War Memorial. War Memorial. Oh, yeah. Anyways, but, but yeah. I, being, being a Cookville kid, you know, I, I grew up in Middle Tennessee, so, um, you know, going to basketball games and OBC championships there and right. Right, some concerts. Um, and then they just had that beautiful renovation. So we're, we're really, really excited. Um, really feel proud to be, you know, an, a folk. Uh, yeah. rock band in Nashville, Tennessee. So totally. hometown kids yeah. show up for the hometown kids. And you'll have a lot of friends showing up for the show as well. A lot I'm of friends sure and selling out. Yeah. And especially since Municipal's been redone. Yeah. You know, such a great, great facility there. But yeah, to me, it always feels like home when you go there. It does. You know, and so uh, going to be a great show in October. But I want to make sure also for our viewers, for the uh, signed copies of the album, to find out all the tours going on for this year. And obviously the singles, the videos, everything else. Where do they need to go for everything Judah and the line? Uh, we're on like all the social stuff, obviously on Instagram and all, all that, but judahandtheline.com is the, the place to get most of the, the goodies, uh, the merch that you're Yeah, you're the cool merch. Maybe sure to have some <laughs> eye masks on there. Yeah, they get the eye masks, maybe candles, some incense, the candles, incense, you know, something yes. kind of set the mood. Something a little bit more meditative, maybe right. just instrumental. Right, or, especially when you're listening to the vinyl and you got it going, you want to, you know, have, you want to have the it's right true. space. Exactly. You know, you, I mean, but it's such great songs with the process. I know, uh, you know, and I, I was telling you guys before we came in studio, so many hit singles on this album. You know, it's like, it's, it's one of those to where with 24 tracks, you're like, wow, that's a lot of tracks. And I'm listening to it going, well, that's a hit and that could be a hit. And that and it's like going, that's pretty all inspiring when you create <laughs> something like that, you know, and coming off your last album, which obviously was well received. And then now this, it's like, it's a big, big deal. You know, it's a process. It is a process, <laughs> for sure. Thanks for going on that journey with us. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, fans and a lot of new fans are going to find you guys uh, with this new album, which is incredible. Be sure, however you consume music, whether it's digital, um, you know, whatever format, I suggest the vinyl, because they're going to have great vinyl for this. With the process, Judah and the Lion on tour. Go see them live. 
Get the album, support this band. They are Nashville based. Judah and Brian, thanks for coming back on the show. Thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. The Rocket Review is sponsored by Why Not Salute.